Welcome back everyone, it's Jamie Hartley here again from Crossfader and today's an exciting day. We have the brand new Pioneer DDJ1000 Record Box Controller. In this video, we're going to find out more of what this controller does. We're going to give our insight and our opinions on the controller and where it sits in the market. Please remember though to subscribe, like, share, comment, do all that good stuff to help us keep making videos like this. And if you have any questions throughout the review and the overview of this product, then drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully the community can get involved too. This is an exciting unit from Pioneer and it's basically a hybrid between the CDJ DJM Nexus 2 range with a controller built in. You'll see what I'm talking about very shortly. The Pioneer DDJ1000 controller is designed specifically for the Rekordbox DJ software. It's about an inch wider than the controllers like the DDJ RX or DDJ SX2, but features the full size jog wheels, four channels, and inherits all the feel and features from Pioneer's CDJ and DJM club range, all within a controller. Firstly, we can think of this controller as a pair of CDJs with two layers, using the deck select 3, 1 and 2 and 4 on each side. But not only that, there is the added bonus of having a full set of performance pads too. This is a hybrid between CDJ, DJM and controller. Sandwiched in between is a four channel DJM mixer, complete with similar feeling faders and EQs, sound color effects and an effects channel just like that on the DJM mixers. Before we dive into some of these features, first let's look at its connectivity. It's powered with a DC adapter and has two USB ports for plugging two laptops in. Great for back-to-back -back sessions and easy changeovers. It has four inputs for adding CDJs or turntables to your setup as well as two mic inputs. It also has a booth output, an XLR and RCA master out, plus two headphone outputs. Each player has a track select knob just like on the CDJs. We can scroll up and down by turning it left and right and then click the pot in to load the track. The jog wheels are exactly the same as on CDJs too. They are full size and pressure sensitive rather than touch sensitive. So if a track is playing, by applying a bit of pressure, we can apply the brake effect or press it harder and it will stop the track. On controllers, it's touch sensitive, so as soon as you touch the top of the jog wheel, it will stop the track. This replicates what a CDJ would feel and look like. As well as that, they also have a jog adjust setting for changing the tension of the jog wheel, whether you want it light, where it will spin away, or heavy, and you can see how the, ch the tension of the jog wheel will change with the setting and jog adjust here. Also, just like on CDJs, you can turn on or off the vinyl mode. So whether you're a scratch DJ, or you want to use the top of the jog wheel to nudge the track, we can hold shift and then press the slip mode to turn off vinyl mode. This will nudge the track faster and slower on the top of the jog wheel. Now for the display in the center of the jog wheels. We get some new information not seen on any other Pioneer players in this controller. For example, we have an overview waveform along the center. We have the BPM readout. We've also got a playhead marker, which is much nicer than on the CDJs and you can very clearly see it scrolling around the track with a very obvious cue marker, especially good for scratch DJs. Also on the display, we have the time elapsed or time remaining. There is a phase meter which will count down and indicate how long is left until your next marker points, whether they're hot cues or memory points. It says 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and these are how many beats are left when we play the track. It starts scrolling to the left, basically counting down towards that next point. As well as that information, we also have the key, the pitch percentage adjust information, and if we turn master tempo off and start adjusting the pitch or tempo of the track, it will also indicate what key that has been transposed into as well. Now obviously this is quite a rough estimate depending on how well the track has been analyzed, but it's quite nice to have all of this information right here on the center of the jog wheel. Lastly, we have the deck numbers. So when we switch decks, it shows which deck we're using and also the sync options. So which deck's the master and whether we've got the sync on or off. Other features inherited from the CDJ range are the manual loop settings. We can do a manual in and out and then exit the loop. We can do an automatic four beat loop by just pressing this button here. If we want to half the loop, we can half it 
using just the in and the out points after a loop's been set. If you want to manually adjust the in and the out points, we can hold shift, press one of them, and then use the jog wheel to change that end point or change the in point. This is the same as on CDJs, pretty much. Also, we have a full size tempo adjust with a master tempo option for locking the key of the track. There are nice, big, tactile cue and play buttons, exactly the same as CDJs, plus a search for scrolling through the track and fast forwarding, just like on CDJs as well. If you press the search button once, it goes on to the next track, back again. So we've got track search and needle search. There's also the memory cue and loop option to store and save memory points or memory loops. If we set a cue point anywhere in the track, we can then press memory and it will store that to the memory point. This also shows up on the phase meter in the center. Lastly, there is the quantize button to turn quantize on and off, locking anything you do to the grid of the track. Slip mode, which will basically keep the track playing no matter what you do, whether you use hot cues. It then jumps back to that current position. This can allow you to be quite creative while mixing and keeping in phrase. If I turn slip mode off, there's a slip reverse, which will reverse the track temporarily and then jump back to where it should have been when we release. Now for the features inherited from the controller setups. For each player, we have performance pads along the bottom. These performance pads have up to eight different modes. And within each mode, you can actually access up to 16 different pads using the page buttons here. So in hot cue mode, we can set hot cues up to 16. You can delete using shift to delete and go back a page. Second mode, pad effects. These are Record Box DJ's tactile pad effects. On the end, we have a release effect, and again, we can scroll the page and access even more. These can be edited within the software to choose which ones you would like the most. Using the gear icon, we can then choose between loads of different effects and map this out exactly how we want it to be set up. Next up, we have the beat jump mode. Using the page buttons, we can access different length beats on the pads. For example, if a track's playing, we can jump through the track in eight beats, or even up to 126, or even more. This is good for if you're wanting to mix in phrase, but skip parts of the track out. It's also good for setting up your own hot cues. Next is the sampler mode. On the mixer, we have a dedicated sampler volume to then play one shots or loops. This can be good for performing live in the mix, adding in drums or even layering in other loops, even from tracks that you've already got loaded within Rekordbox. Those loops can be saved within the sampler and launched at any point. To access the rest of the pad modes, just hold shift and then press any of the pad mode buttons. The first one is keyboard. This allows us to select any cue point and then pitch the track up in semitones from that cue point. Using the page, you can access the full octave up and down from the original key. Next up, we have pad effects two. Just even more tactile pad effects that you can choose from and map out to your liking. Next, beat loop. If you want to set an auto beat loop longer than four beats that we have here, we can use the beat loop function here. That's two beats, use the page, and we can access something like 32 beats. Lastly, if you hold shift and then press sampler, we have key shift. This pitches the track up and down by semitones but keeps it playing, unlike keyboard mode, which jumps back to the cue point. If at any point you get lost in what key you're in or you messed up the key, even if you're doing some tone play techniques, you can then hit master tempo or key reset and it will reset the key back at any point, no matter what mode you're in, back to the original key. There is also key sync mode, which will sync the key to the other track. It reads and analyzes the keys of the track 
and locks them together so that they should ideally mix harmonically together. Now, bear in mind that the software has to analyze the music and it does a, its best job of analyzing what key it's in, but it doesn't always get it right. This, however, is a really nice feature to have as a tactile button on the controller. Now moving on to the mixer section. It's very self-explanatory with four channels, a Magvel crossfader for any scratch DJs. It's nice and smooth for all those tight cuts. The headphone cues are the same as on the DJM mixer. We have a dedicated sampler volume, which is slightly different because we don't have that on the DJM mixers. That means you don't have to give up one of the channels. You can have the sampler going as well as four different channels. Headphones, we have the mixing option and the headphone levels. There's a three band EQ as well as trim controls, plus the sound color effects. Let's check out some of those sound color effects now. With the filter. The noise. Still very loud within this controller. Dub echo. This works post fader. And then the pitch. Over to the right of the mixer, we have the Beat Effects channel. This is located in a very familiar way just to all the DJM range of mixers. Down the right hand side, we have access to the different Beat Effects. There are loads of different Beat Effects within the mixer. Now, these are all pretty much the same as, say, the DJM 900 Nexus 2, plus a few extra ones that have been added to the Rekordbox DJ software. Let's have a look at some of those now. One of those is Local Echo. We can change the beat fraction. Local echo kills the bass, but applies an echo to the higher frequencies. This works post fader. We can choose which channel we want to apply the effect to. It can also be applied to the sampler as well. Another effect that we have access to that isn't on the DJ mixes is Enigma Jack. Another frequency effect that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Lastly, there are two effects that don't need any sound routed through for them to work. They're synthesized sounds built in to the controller. Mobius Saw creates this mad build-up style sweeping effect. And Mobius Try Very similar, but a different tone to the sound. The effects channel also has the auto and tap functions like on the DJM, but we'll have to hold shift to access them. One thing to note is it doesn't have a time knob, so we can't adjust, apart from the beat fractions, we can't adjust any tighter fractions than that. On top of all of that, one of the best features I like about Rekordbox and this controller is that actually, if you're not happy with how the pad modes are set up, we can use the pad edit mode, which is in Rekordbox here. In pad edit mode, we can personalize and create our own user groups. So for example, if I want to change hot cues to not have 16 hot cues, because I don't use 16 hot cues, I can change it to have eight hot cues. Then on the second page, some of my other favorite features like beat jump, for example. <laughs> Plus the pad effects and a nice echo out at the end. So all within the same pad mode, I can have whatever combination of um, performance features that I like. You can set up different templates and use those templates in different scenarios, whether you're using the controller for a routine around tone play or whether you're using it just to DJ at parties and weddings. You can set this up to react and respond and map it out exactly how you want it to work. That's one of my favorite things and favorite features about Rekordbox and this controller in particular. The other thing is these jog wheels. Obviously, they are great. If you're used to playing on CDJs, then they feel so, so similar. Okay, so here's the thing. This controller absolutely packs a punch. You can access nearly all of the performance features within the Rekordbox DJ software, just like other controllers from Pioneer. But not only that, it now feels and looks very similar to a club setup from Pioneer with the CDJ style jog wheels, the effects channel from the DJM mixers. And by the way, talking about the effects channels before, I know someone's gonna drop a comment. If you've got your own CDJs or turntables, external CDJs or turntables plugged in, using this as a standalone mixer, 
These effects also work without the Rekordbox DJ software plugged in. You can get rid of this USB and the effects still work just with this as a standalone mixer. Now for £1,059 in the UK or $1,199 if it serves me correct in the US, I think you're getting a lot for your money right now because if you imagine the mixer alone with those effects, never mind the CDJ part of it, you're going to be spending a similar amount on another Pioneer mixer. So you get that as well as the controller functionality with these players, with the performance pads, the nice full-size jog wheels. It's not too big. It's not as big. It's literally an inch bigger than the DDJ RX or the Pioneer DDJ SX2. It's quite interesting to think that Pioneer have also got the DDJ RZ and RZX on the market, which are much bigger controllers, but pretty much do the same. However, they're much more expensive. So Pioneer have come in with a product around the thousand pound mark, $1,200 mark, and actually it ticks a lot of the boxes. I think this is gonna be one of the most popular products to go to market. I'd be very interested to hear what you think in the comments below. Are you thinking about buying one of these? Do you have any questions? Do you want me to test it out with anything? Please drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer every single one. I'm really excited to upload our skills video with this unit. I'm gonna try and test it out, put it through its paces and see really what it's capable of. Make sure to check that out if there's a link floating around somewhere. And if not, please remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff to help us keep making videos like this. My name's Jamie Hartley. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next review video.